this way again, but it's still a bit too soon. Security's gonna be tighter and overall could be tricky. But hey, pay may also be better. It's your call. I'd say go for it if you have a solid heist crew behind you. Welcome back to the channel everyone. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to complete the Big Con Casino Heist on hard mode with the high buyer and the gold and getting the Elite Challenge. The heist crew you need for this, um, the first guy is going to be Carl Abalaji. Guns are not important on this heist so just go for the cheapest. When we go on to vehicles, again just use the cheapest one. Vehicles aren't important the way that we do our elite challenges. And for the hacker, just stick with Paige. Um, it's a 9% cut, she does everything that you need her to do and it's going to make the hacking a lot easier. On to the preps. The only optional preps that you need to do are the patrol routes and the level 2 key cards. For the disguise, it's really important that you select the group sex gear. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend collecting all the 52 playing cards from the casino, which will unlock the high roller outfits. That way, you won't need to do the noose prep or the firefighter prep, and over a long period, it's going to save you a lot of time. You can easily complete this with four players, but I just prefer to do it with two. Once you get good at it, you're going to earn a lot more money because you're splitting it between two players rather than four. And like I say, it's easily completable. Uh, me and my partner seem to do it pretty much every single time and with time to spare. Once you've selected the group sex gear, <laughs> the entrance will automatically change to the tunnel entrance. You then want to select the high buyer, choose your disguise. You do not need to purchase any of the other extra options because they're going to be absolutely useless in this. Okay, they're expecting these chips today, so get over there in the group sex van. Unless you're total idiots, you'll walk in without any problems. Seeing you dressed up like that makes me feel all fuzzy. <laughs> it's like your kids putting on their uniforms for their first day at school. Uh, only, I don't have kids. Just some, uh, pretty basic AI experiments that swear at me in Russian and want to destroy the world. <laughs> you know, we all love it our own ways. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah, let's rob this thing. Your Elite Challenge timer will start as soon as you hit this black screen. The black screen is about 35 seconds long, but that will add on to your total time, so just be wary. And of course, be sure to give your partner the middle finger at every opportunity. Take the stairs rather than lift, it's more consistent and is less likely to glitch out and cause you more problems. As soon as you get out of that door, hit the jump button. As you can see, it's a lot faster than the maximum sprint speed that you can do along this part of the map. Be sure to have mics and a headset so you can communicate with each other and things like this. 3, 2, 1, scan the cards. Two card system. 
Once in the man trap, keep spamming that jump button to move as fast as you possibly can. something man they never tell me nothing you know i'll get it open for you <clears throat> okay oh that's a heavy door ain't much getting through here there <laughs> as soon as you enter start jumping towards the first trolleys of gold To perform the new gold bar glitch, pick up the first bar, back out, and then go back into the tray, and as you'll see, the gold bars have doubled. This will only work in the first few seconds when you enter the vault. Be careful though, because it doesn't always work. Sometimes you can get frozen, or the gold can be frozen, and you can't pick any more of it up. Be sure to have some good hackers on your team to get as much gold as possible before you leave the vault. Once you have enough gold, you will not be able to use the jump function. In this case, just go into first person and just use the run button. And be sure to exit before the timer runs out. Again, be sure to stay in first person for as long as possible to get the maximum speed that you can. Be sure to swipe your keycard for the stairs and not the lift and head on up. Once at the top of these stairs, have a look on your radar to see where the next guard is that patrols this route. Get your gun prepared because you're about to knock this guy out. 
hide behind this wall and as soon as he gets close enough, go out, smack him in the face. The people behind that window cannot see for some reason. Run under this camera, follow this guy out, knock him out, keep running to the right and change into your disguises. Once in the disguises, the patrol guards' icons will be white. You can just run past these without any problems. Head out of the staff lobby and wait for the little cutscene. Once outside you want to hop onto this wall, over this fence and then just run to the very end of this track. Despite the news icons being red, they are unlikely to give you any problems. If the noose are alerted, it does make the next bit a little bit trickier. Unlike me, try not to smash your face on these rocks. Once you're out here, keep looking to the left and hopefully you'll get a car spawn. You can usually make one spawn here if both of you are looking to the right and back again. If you're both looking in the same direction, it should spawn. If one's looking to the left, then obviously the car won't spawn. If you're still unlucky, you can still run down this road and just to the right you'll see some extra cars for you to take. Depending on where your getaway cars spawn, this is usually the best way. If your cars are spawning really close, then take those if possible. But in this instance, our cars were so far away, it's easier to go to the left where you can avoid most of the cops and just take your time and select your vehicle. You want to head towards the La Mesa police station and down an alley right next to it. If you park up really close to this wall, the driver will glitch out and save you a few more seconds. Hop up this ledge, it back into first person so you can sprint faster. Keep hopping up these ledges. One on the right here after that line. Just make sure you're not too far right here, otherwise the ledge will be too tall and you won't be able to get up it. Keep in first person, take your time up this ledge because you can fall off. Up to the left. Behind these air conditioning units. Hop up here. Next one. Over to the left. Still standing in first person means you can do this next jump in one go. And there you are. Hopefully, you will get a police helicopter here. The passenger in the helicopter should be looking at their map and letting you know where the drop-off point is. There are three drop-off points for the high buyer. There's one near the bridge by the Zancudo military base. There's one at the sawmill and there's one at the far end at Palato Bay.
Once you've lost the cops, simply hit the yellow circle. Doing it this way, we're consistently around a 13 minute mark or so, which gives us a lot of extra time for any faults or any mishaps that may happen. And there you have it, easy peasy one million each. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video, hope it makes it a lot easier for you to complete. Uh, if you found it useful, give us a, a like, subscribe if you'd like, hit that bell icon. Any comments are welcome, and uh, good luck, and I'll see you in the next one.